Well, good morning. Uh, good seeing everyone here today. Uh, announcements for today. Um, uh, it, we are now in blue. <laughs> so we're now in the season of Advent. We got Thanksgiving a couple of days ago, and now we're now we're in December and Advent. Here, here we are. So, um, of course, uh, for the Sunday ser- service series, uh, we're going on the series, He Shall Be Called, after Isaiah 9, uh, chapter 6. Um, and then, uh, um, again, there is also a devotional uh, for this uh, Sunday Advent series that you're also welcome to take home. Um, I, I really enjoyed uh, this one from our publishing house, Concordia Publishing House, as it's... Uh, um, I thought it was very uh, more personal than technical in the way it was written. Um, so you're welcome to pick the one up for yourself or, or for someone you might know who, who wants one as they're um, next to the other devotionals on the way out. Uh, our midweek s- services will also start this week, uh, Wednesdays at 7 p.m. And I'll talk about the songs of the coming in Christ and, and, look, and Luke as uh, this calendar year we'll be going through the book of Luke. Um, the church calendar starts, but the church starts in December at Advent and not January 1st. Um, what else I have here? The other thing is, uh, this is the second day. I'm announcing Secret Santa uh, for the Willows Care Home here in town. It looks like you guys have already done a fabulous job. Last time I checked, there was a, only one tag out of 10 left on the tree. I don't know if that one tag is still there. There was three when I showed up this morning, so they're all gone. And mo- it seems like most of the presents are back already, uh, which is fantastic since I'm not wasn't expecting them until uh, towards the end of this month on Sunday, December 22nd. So uh, thank you for that. If for some reason you want more, want more to give away, I can always make a phone call. But as far as I, I with the people I'm seeing here and who's who's signed up, I think we've got everything squared away. So um, there's that. Anything else I'm forgetting? That's right. Yeah, this Saturday we'll have um, the nativity set up for the town at the railroad uh, or at the park by the railroad on Tehama Street. As usual, well, I put in the bulletin. I mean, I put in the newsletter. We're we're meeting at nine. That's right, I didn't put it in the bulletin, but it is. it was in the newsletter <laughs> um, that we're meeting at 9 uh, to gather everything from the storage here at the church and then go over to the park to set up. Um, and then um, and then everyone will go on their way. Of course. Yeah, weather's looking good so far. <laughs> It's it's been a busy week. I haven't even had a chance to check the weather. All I know it's been cold, <laughs> but it's wet, so it shouldn't be too hard to set up. Um, uh, that's we're nailing uh, all the figures into the ground. Anything else? Thank you for that one. All right. Of course, there's uh, fellowship treats after service, uh, but before then, let's go ahead and stand and uh, read it responsively. Psalm 119 with the selected verses. O Lord, your testimonies are wonderful. Therefore, my soul keeps them. The unfolding of your word gives them hope and imparts understanding to the simple. I open my mouth and pant because I long for your commandments. Turn to me and be gracious to me as is your way with those who love your name. Keep steady my steps according to your promise. Let no iniquity get dominion over me. Redeem me from man's oppression, that I may keep your precepts. Make your face shine upon your servant, and teach me your statutes. My eyes shred of tears, because people do not keep your law. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. 
We now continue uh, with the hymn, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We do not always bring our sins to God, confident that our wonderful Counselor has forgiven them all. Let us therefore confess our sins to our Heavenly Father. Confess that I have sinned against you this day. Still my sins I know, the thoughts and words and deeds of which I am ashamed. But some are known only to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I ask forgiveness. Deliver and restore me that I may rest in peace. By the mercy of God, we are redeemed by Jesus Christ. And in him, we are forgiven. We now rest in his peace and rise in the morning to serve him. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Hope, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Stir up our hearts, O Lord. Make ready the way of your only begotten Son, that by his coming we may be enabled to serve you with pure minds through the name, through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the Old Testament reading. Our Old Testament reading is from Isaiah chapter 9. Nevertheless, there will be no more gloom for those who were in distress. In the past, he humbled the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, but in the future, he will honor Galilee 
of the Gentiles by the way of the sea along the Jordan. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On, the, on those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. This is the word of the Lord. Our epistle reading comes from Romans chapter 11. For God has bound all men over to disobedience so that he may have mercy on them all. O oh, the depth of the riches of the wisdom and knowledge of God! How unsearchable his judgments and his paths beyond tracing out! Who has known the mind of the Lord? Or who has been his counselor? Who has ever given to God that God should repay him? From him and through him and to him are all things. To him be the glory forever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according yeah, to St. Matthew, the seventh chapter. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine, Jesus says, and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall, because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears the words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching, because he taught as one who had authority, not as their teachers of the law. This is the gospel of the Lord. We confess our Christian faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, who was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and a life everlasting. Amen. Uh, you may be seated as we sing the hymn, uh, What Child Is This?
Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, has anyone here heard of Dwayne Johnson? What nickname is he known for? The Rock, yes. What about Elvis? What is his nickname? The, the King or, or the King of Rock. What about Johnny Cash? The Man in Black, yes. Apparently this was because Johnny usually wore the color black. Now I'm sure you can give me other examples about uh, people who have gone by another name than their birth name. But it's interesting how some nicknames just stick. It's a descriptive feature that the people get a kick out of. Now in Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, Isaiah says that a Savior is coming and that his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. You might think of these as eight descriptive names of Jesus, but we'll look at them as four descriptive names. And today we'll look at the first one, Wonderful Counselor. Now, is this name particularly attractive to you? Well, you may not find it offensive. Now, I know some people can or take, can take or leave professional counselors, and maybe they are just a resource when you need them. But what kind of people in your life might be a counselor to you? Your best friend, your spouse, your children, your church, your pastor, your neighbor, your parents. They're all different kinds of people that can help us understand who we are and how we ought to live. But who would you rather listen to? The professionals? Your friends? God? Ourselves? Some random article on the internet? It is interesting now that so much information is available on the internet that people can kind of choose which community of people they want to listen to and then just live according to their guidance. You don't necessarily need to have someone speaking into you uh, to give you some words of wisdom. You can just take out your smartphone and just ask it what you should do. And you can get more than enough answers that you could care for. But one problem with this is that you don't have a real person checking in on you. You don't have someone to call you out when you are making a bad choice. Why does that matter? Because we all make bad choices at times. Even myself. We like to think we have it all figured out, whether we are two or 92. But the problem is, we don't. And Proverbs eleven fourteen says, where there is no guidance, a people falls. But in an abundance of counselors, there is safety. And as Proverbs fifteen twenty two says, without counsel, plans fail. But with many advisors, they succeed. Now, I'm sure you have realized you are a bit overconfident at times. And perhaps there are times when you wish you had a different crowd of counselors around you. Maybe you would have made better decisions. But we all need counsel from somewhere. Now, even the people in the prophet Isaiah's time, didn't have it all figured out. Ahaz, the king of Judah in the southern kingdom of Israel, 
in the year 730 BC, was a ruler of God's people. But he didn't want to seek guidance from God. He wasn't interested in listening to God's messenger, the prophet Isaiah, about making good choices. He thought that trusting in people who worshipped and followed pagan gods was a better option. And while we faithful Christians might think that following anyone besides God is silly, we have to remember that a king is working with all different kinds of advisors. Not only did he work with prophets, he worked with priests, some legal advisors, military leaders, salesmen. There are all different kinds of people that the kings had worked with. There was all different kinds of influences in their lives. Where Ahaz failed in this matter is that he didn't keep the Lord, the creator of the universe, as the number one counselor. As Proverbs 1.7 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. I suppose it takes some wisdom to know if you're being counseled by a fool or not. But when we first look to God, then our understanding of how the world works, things begin to fall into place. Now, we do know that Jesus is our wonderful counselor because not only does the Old Testament say so, but so does the New Testament. The Gospel of Matthew not only says that this reference in Isaiah is about Jesus, but Jesus was indeed an amazing counselor, as his teachings are shared throughout the scriptures. I'm sure many of you have heard the Sermon on the Mount, the Sermon by Jesus. The short version of this sermon is the 11 verses, the first 11 verses called the Beatitudes. The Beatitudes say that the blessed are the poor in spirit, for they shall inherit the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God. And then there's also the three-chapter version of the Sermon of the Mount. And in those three chapters, there are all different kinds of things to take away. When you look at all the points that are made out, it can seem like Jesus is just trying to give a list of rules. But I think there's some main points Jesus is trying to get the people to understand. The first point is, if life is difficult for you, take heart in what is going on, as you won't be left behind, and you will indeed be blessed. And as you continue in the sermon, you get the sense that if you think you have it all together, and that you have loved God, here are many things I bet you haven't done. So in this sermon from Jesus, Jesus encourages and blesses those who are feeling lowly, and he humbles the proud. Jesus does a whole lot of counseling in this sermon, but he puts people in their place. I believe Jesus is saying in these three chapters is, look, if you think that the, you have the Christian life all figured out, can you outlove as much as God loves? Or are you busy trying to be more right than the other people around you? Are you busy trying to cheat God's call to love others, thinking that 
it doesn't have a lasting impact on others around you. Or it does. And the reason why you're trying to do these things is because you don't have the wisdom and strength to do what God tells you to do. As we heard in our gospel lesson this morning, when Jesus was finished with his roughly 15-minute sermon, it says, the crowds were astonished at his teaching, for he was teaching them as one who had authority. When the people heard Jesus give this sermon, many realized that he must have had some insider knowledge that could have only come from God. And Jesus wasn't necessarily trying to lead them to be more right as much as to help them recognize that they needed a Savior. That no matter how much they try to act like they have it all together, they aren't fooling God. They are all sinners. But God didn't want them to remain lost and damned in their sinful state. He's hoping that they would receive counsel from God and recognize their sin and repent of their sinful ways. Let their hearts be open to receiving what God has asked them to do. That whatever is driving them to find hope is first focused on the Lord. This habit for a follower of God should be quite simple, but yet people keep seeking other things to replace God's counsel, even today. Even this can be found in counselors, professional counselors themselves. Yes, Christian counselors and therapists are great, but there are several other counselors that might try to give you an excuse for you to hold on to your sin and say that it's okay for you to live in sin because your broken history gives you permission to keep on sinning. But the counsel from God isn't to live with excuses. Instead, his counsel brings hope and it brings purpose. For God sees the mess that you are in, whether it was caused by you or someone else, and he takes that mess and he puts it on his son, Jesus Christ, who took the blame for those sins and he died on the cross. This is the hope for us. This is the hope for all people. Our hope and identity is now someone who belongs into Christ, not our past. We all are someone who belongs to God because Jesus has saved us from our past. And our future is now bright as we belong in God's kingdom. A future where we can now love and care for others as Jesus has counseled us to do where we are brought into a community of believers who are also hoping to seek counsel from the Lord, who also experience the wonderful ways that God has also picked them up from where they were at and used them for his graceful purpose. And now we not only have more joy and energy to embrace the future, but that also may others so that also others around us may embrace this same joy and energy, knowing that God too will care for them as he has and will save them, where we all will live eternally in God's gracious and loving eternal home. This is God's hope for Judah, and this is God's hope for the people in Jesus' time. And this is God's hope for us today. Who would have have thought that such an amazing counselor would have come such a rather poor family from Mary and Joseph 
who lived in an average city in the city of Nineveh, or in the city of Nazareth. But God has counseled us and given us a source for a better future. And through our wonderful counselor, Jesus Christ, let our hearts have hope in him so that we may continue to be counseled by God through his word and his people, hearing and knowing that Jesus is our source for all that is good, right, and true. And that Jesus is our source for our eternal, wonderful future. As God will use us to counsel others, sharing hope, truth, love, and forgiveness. In Jesus' name, amen. May the peace of God that surpasses all understanding keeps our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. At this time, we will now collect our offerings to the Lord. Let us pray. O Lord, our God, you declared Israel to be your people and brought them out of Egypt. You desired their salvation even when they would not listen to your voice. Since you have called and gathered us also to be your people, open our hearts to listen and gladly submit to your word. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, as you sent John the Baptist to prepare the way of the Lord and send forth pastors and missionaries to declare your saving word to the nation, preserve them from temptation, protect them in suffering, and equip them with every good gift to make known the Christ who still comes to save. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. Heavenly Father, as you call and gather us into your family, so bless the households of this congregation. Bless husbands and wives, fathers and mothers, as they go about their work of strengthening marriage and, ch and raising children. Let their love abound more and more with each other, with knowledge and discernment, and fill their homes with righteousness that comes through Christ Jesus. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of hosts, John the Baptist even counseled... Uh, 
repentant soldiers who would go about their military duties according to your word. Remember those who serve in the armed forces. Protect them from harm and give them also wisdom and courage and grant that they may fulfill their duties honorably. Lord, in your mercy, a merciful Lord, your forerunner, John the Baptist, prepare the way for the one who is mightier than all, your son, Jesus Christ. For his sake, we entrust you, those who are in need of healing, especially those we now name silently in our hearts. Comfort them and rescue them, and have mercy upon them and deliver them. Lord, in your mercy. Holy God, you sent your Son to purify us, to counsel us and give us wisdom that we might be righteous and holy before you. Deliver us from the love of sin, which defiles us. Cleanse our hearts by your grace, so that we may delight in your promises, and our works would be pleasing to you. Lord, in your mercy. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Amen. May you now leave with this benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. And I'll finish with the hymn, Son of God, Eternal Savior. Amen.